Hello and good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's a stormy old day with showers and sunshine. So suddenly we have to break off, it's because the showers are coming in. We've had some heavy rain this morning, we've also had some beautiful sunshine until we come out to start and then the sun's coming. Now we're around the front of the cottage and we're planting up the two troughs. I've actually done one, so we'll show you the one I've done and then we'll move to do the other one. Now, this is the smaller of the two troughs. Now, all the plants for in this year's displays have all been overwintered. We've actually been out and bought nothing because we couldn't get out, so this is the overwintered stock. Now I do believe there's a storm up there that's just coming over us and it's just starting to rain so we'll have a small break now. Now that was a nice drop of rain and a very nice cup of tea while it's raining. These are the plants that we'll be using. As I said it's all overwintered stocks. It looks well watered and bashed about now with the latest storm but we'll soon have them in. And the compost is a good quality compost and I've actually mixed some well rotted leaf mould with it just to give it that bit of bite and I've put in a bad handful of blood fish and bone. Now the quite large plants that will get them in we'll just pick the front which is there so put this one in the centre. I want to get it quite low. There you go. And now uh, this one, it's another quite large plant, but it'll go at the bank, it'll be fine. We'll put this one here, it right way round so it looks looks good. If I, I might turn that a little bit, that's it. Push the compost in. And this end I'm putting two together because they're not quite as strong as those just to keep the balance. The balance on it. And the sun's come out for us so it's making a lovely day. We'll put those two together you see. So it, that'll be nice there. Try and keep as tidy as uh, Nice pink geranium there and that can go in there like that. That'll fill up nicely. And we'll balance it with this other pink one this side. Now as you can see that's coming together nicely now. We'll just get some more plants. We'll put these two two reds here I think. And we'll put the other one at the side of it. These are actually the cuttings we took last autumn, so it's grown quite well. And this one in there. Just sort the leaves out a little. They will sort themselves out and the flowers will stand once they've been watered and add some sun on. This pretty one, we'll put that side to balance up with that red. Put it nice and deep so it stands well. There you are, look. There's a bit of a dead leaf there, we'll take that out. There you go. These will sort themselves out. Make sure it's well planted. 
we'll just stand back and have a look I can see we need a couple more in that front we'll put this small regal in that front it will start flowering again soon that can go in there that will tend to spread out more I think we'll put this orangey red into this space here we'll put that in there and that will show quite well so that can go in there that's good They say they'll sort themselves out in a little while and the leaves will all turn into the sun. Now this other one, not quite as strong as that one, but it will soon pick up. And we'll pop this one in here now. In that space there. I'll just tighten it up. There you go. Quite a bit of dead head. There'll be quite a bit of dead heading to do in a few days, but then we'll come back to that. These are the Bakupa cuttings we took with you. They've all rooted well. Remember we put three in each, so we've got nice full pots. And then we'll put one in each end and one in just off centre. If you see, look, wherever they touch the compost, they'll root anyway. So if anything's going backwards, it will root and make the pants stronger anyway. They get quite strong there, do yeah? Here's our label, look. And when we've finished it, we will top it up with compost, obviously. When it settles down, it'll want a bit more, isn't it? It's a bit low in this side, so I will need some more compost in there. But we'll plant it up and then I'll top it up. We'll put these ivy leaf geraniums in the front. We'll put two, two, two. We have three different colours. As you can see the storms bash them about a bit but they'll be fine. These are actually the cuttings that we took last autumn. We'll take them again this year so everybody can overwinter their stock. It's a case of keeping up with taking the dead ends off. It's been a really warm spring this year and we, we've had a lot of flowers. So let's put these in the arm. A bit low on compost at this end, but it's no problem because I'll fetch some round when we're finished. We'll put two of those in there, look, so we, we can give it plenty of colour. This is a pretty one, once dead head in again, take those off, it's an odd leaf once coming off as well, but we'll put these one and one there so they'll all fill up. In case again I'm a bit short of compost in there, to fetch some. Oops. Put one each side. Pretty tight to the middle because these will fill all this up. In fact we'll take that one off. There you go. And then we'll put the other two into this space here. Here we are. Again, there's an odd flower once taken off. Quite pretty. This one. Rooted well. There was an odd leaf once taken off and I think that flower's beginning to go over so we take that off. And then pop it in there.
and then if you can just bear with me for a moment I'll nip round into the courtyard and get a little bit more compost just to fill that side up. We want to just top this up a little bit. That's it. And in this end which was quite That's better, I'm happy with that. There you are then, that's the trough completed. That's all the flowers that we had from overwintering. There's quite a few around the uh, front of the cottage. Guy will probably show you those that we've overwintered. Right, so this year we'll call the display the lockdown tubs. So Di will just show you what we've managed to overwinter and what we've done with them. These are the bigger fuchsias that we overwintered. They really have come along with this warm weather. As you can see they're quite a size now. So by the end of the season they'll be quite large. Now over winter we had used to have a a juniper in there but it died over the winter so I've had to remove that so I've had to put these uh, geraniums and a little bit of salvia in there that we raised from seed just to fill the space and then when we get out we'll get some new shrubs for it. Peony is doing well it doesn't like the wet weather though I'm afraid it'll soon knock those flowers off. Right that's the planting of the troughs that's all the front actually planted now it's a case of just looking after them feeding them once a week and bringing them and deadheading deadheading is quite a problem when you have a lot but we get through it slowly now we'll go down the garden and we'll trim a little bit of that lilac provided it's not too wet we'll decide when we get down there being asked how we trim the lilac after flowering. Now we don't take the dead heads off the lilac because if you look just behind the stem these are next year's shoots just there so if you had to go around cutting off you'll take out those shoots and then you won't get so much flower. The idea when you're trimming the lilac, if you just left the lilac you'll have a lovely green base and all the flowers will be at the top so what we do every year is just take so many of the top branches off and then you'll get more at the bottom that will flower for next year we don't take it all off so it looks like it's had its hair cut just take a few out what I do, I look for the buds and then just cut above it. Now last year I'd had my knee operation so I'm afraid the top was just cut off by my son. But he did a good job, but we'll do it properly this year. So what we do, we go in and just take some of the mount, cut above a branch like that one. Can you see that one will now that one will now carry next year's flowers Smart. if you look at this one everything's right up at the top but there's a bud here and a bud here so what we'll do i don't know if you can see we'll go just above that bud there look you see and cut off it's quite soft wood so it will easily cut but if you just do that selectively through you'll find that when it's finished it still looks like a nice bush. We'll just go around take a few off. This is no good at all look, so we'll take that one out. This one, got a nice shoot there and several buds coming off it there so we'll take that one out. There'll be some cleaning up to do I'm afraid but don't do every single one. I'm cutting a little bit heavier here because it hangs over the path and we're actually walking through it when we're 
when we come down the path so this you see this is on the path now so we just follow it down got a nice pair of buds there look so we just cut this one as well look. nice pair of buds there we we'll leave those they're fine now we'll I'll do one or two for you and then I'll finish it and show you that's fine that just wants the top take into the bud slot. There you go. You'll see better in a moment once we get into it. This one, it was cut off there last year. You can see where Byron cut it last year and the year before. So we're going to take it off there and we'll leave the other two on this so it's got a bit of height on it we just thin it there you go likewise this one look, we'll take that one out should have been at an angle that one look, so we we'll just recut that now it sounds like next door's got their compressor on i do apologize what i should do now is go through it and just select branches say 50% of the branches just thin the top out and that will bring more flowering buds out from the bottom so next spring we'll have a nice display of flowers rather than all the flowers at the top I'll just go around and finish it and then I'll show you but remember only take 50% and always cut back to a pair of buds because they'll need the tree will want those buds to grow a little as you can see I've pruned the top of the lilac now I've used the long handled pruner at the end I couldn't reach without putting the ladder on the garden and I didn't want to do that because it's quite full of plants in there that is going to look nice now all the flowers next year will be round here where we can see them and just a little bit of new growth on top now all these little bits of trimmer I should put through the shredder and put them straight onto the compost heap. The wood of the lilac that's new growth is very soft. Now we're going to have a look at these grapevines that seem to be shooting low down on the stem. We'll take those off. Now these are the ones I can take off with not being so wet down here. I'm going to take them right back to the main cane now. There are some flowers on them. That means you would get grapes, but I don't want grapes just here. It will be in the way all summer. So I'm going to take them right back to the main cane knot and take them off. Even this one that's trying to get in the tool shed. Right back. I'm going to throw them down then these will go through the shredder as well. Right back. If I leave a little bit on them they'll only start shooting again. So if we can find that one. That one I'll have to come out as well. Right? Hey, this one. And that one. And that one. That one will grow, now we've taken those off, so we, and this one's gone inside and it there, so I'll have to find where that one joins, just there. Hey, let's take this one off. This one, and that one. It looks a lot better already, but I'm getting wet through now, pulling them from the top. <laughs> and, We'll have to leave that vine at that because Diane says she's getting wet through as well with removing the vine. There we are, that'll sit nicely now. We've got a little bit of green still on there, that's something to look at. But they're not hanging over and brushing into you when you go past. If it's nice and dry next week, we'll get up there and we'll take them off because they're putting quite a bit of growth on now, especially with this rain. Now we'll just have a look at this young grape and take the growth off 
from the main canes because we don't want growth at the bottom, we want growth at the top so I can train it into this space. Now this young grape, obviously we won't let it flower this year, probably not next year as well, but we will get it up onto this frame and train it. Now up, up here you can see this is last year's growth that hasn't got through the winter. So when we've taken this off, we'll take that off as well. That's not doing any good there. But these are the shoots I want off first. So all the strength is going up to give me a good top. I'm going to keep this one, this one, and this one. So those three are the ones we'll take. Everything else will have to come off. So let's get on with it. We'll cut our way in first and then we'll follow this one back. We'll take it off and then follow it back to where we can cut it off. There you are then, that's free. There is a another stem coming off it there which we don't really want look that's dead at the top so let's take that away there you go this is one we don't really want this one we need two there's one there's two look right so we'll take this one off. So this one we don't really want. So we'll take that off right down there and take that away. This side shoot here, we'll reduce that and that one. This one, I need all the strength in that cane to go up, not up this one though I'm afraid. So we'll take that off. And that'll take that dead off as well. Look. Here it is. We'll take that off. So we've got some going up now. Let's have a look what we've got. One, two, three. We've got two break into three, so that's fine. These little shoots that are coming off, we don't want. This one we don't want here, not. So there's the three, so let's take this one off. We we'll keep that one, we we'll keep that one, we we'll keep that one, but we need to get rid of this dead stalk at the top. It worries me a little that it hasn't got through the winter because we haven't really had it. A severe winter this year so I'm thinking we might have to put some fleece around this one if the weather gets really bad. It doesn't seem to be as tough as the old Hamburg there so we might just wrap it in a bit of fleece. We'll take that out. Look. That's doing no good at all if it can go at all. There it is. Now we're just left with those three that we want. This one here will just stop and we'll hold that one as a reserve in case the wind takes one of these off. Now what we'll do now, we'll start and train it one along and one down to meet the other vine. We'll tie those in later when they get a little bit longer. If we've they're too small and you try to do it. it, it just bends and grows up again. So when we've got a length, we can put the whole length up. I've had to put my coat on. The wind is turned from the north and it's very, very cold. But while we're here, I just thought I'd show you the wildflowers, how they're coming along. That we've done for our friend. As you can see, there's a fair old assortment of different wildflowers there 
and then in those two little pots there are the next setting of the lettuce now i've been asked how i tie the blackberry up so that we get next year's crop remember it only fruits on the previous years come inside the fruit cage and it's no warmer this is the blackberry that the birds gave us now as you can see it's absolutely covered in fruit but when we've taken this fruit off when it's ripened and we take it we actually cut all these canes off and then next year's fruit will be on these canes that I'm pulling round to grow on this side of the frame so you've got one side growing, one side fruiting all the time now it's quite a, quite a job and I thank goodness that it's thornless now it's no good getting the cane and pushing it hard round because it will just snap so you have to gently gently take it round I take it round on this size of string it's easier so get it in position and then just gently tie the string so it holds it there while it grows and you'll find that slowly you can keep tightening the string and you can actually turn the corner with them so it's no good tying it again because this will grow fast if you tie it there it'll just grow on a bend this one here is the same it's coming coming up this is next year's cane so this one I'm going to tie just there loosely and then when that grows a bit I'll take it around the corner same again bit of size of string just one one tie on the wire and then if you bring it down gently and just put a loose tie on it and just let it hold it's amazing as the stem hardens it will hold itself there now there's another one somewhere I've got to find it this one here I don't know if you can see it it's coming up the same way again so what I'll you do is just loosely tie it to this string to start it going in the right direction just not too tight just enough to hold it especially if the wind's flapping it about a bit there you are lull both of those in if I can tie it there you are there will be more canes coming up like these and we'll have to slowly tie them in until we fill all this up with next year's canes if you do it little and often you can do it if you let them get too strong and then try and bend them you just snap them right there's just two more little jobs we need to do today and if we get a move on we'll probably get it done for the next storm we've just had to dash into the greenhouse because another rainstorm has just come through so one of the little jobs I have to do is I want to put some chalk mixed with a little bit of compost and I top dress the peppers with it. I do believe that the chalk on the top of the pots of pepper stop the peppers from dropping the flowers. It seems to work, I don't know why, but I do it every year and I always get a decent crop. This is just children's blackboard chalk, ground up and mixed with a little bit of compost that's been screened. And then I just mix it up and sprinkle it on the top of the pots. Just like this. And that's it. I just go round them all. There you go. There's one over here that I haven't done. It's something to do with the 
calcium in the chalk I believe that helps the stops them from dropping the flowers too much. What I will do, I'll put some on the aubergines as well, it won't hurt them. And put a bit more on that one. Look. These are the aubergines, they're doing quite well. But we'll just put, I seem to be putting more on the floor at the moment. I'll soon sweep that up. There you are. And the sun's coming out now, would you believe me? You can actually, if you wish, put some on top of your tomatoes as well. While we're going past, can you see where this flower's started to grow on? If you leave that, that'll take all the strength from making, forming those tomatoes there. So just nip those off. Another one here, look. Just nip them off, carefully. Some tomatoes get it more than others, but just keep an eye on it and take them off as you see them. This one is badly deformed. It's got two full leaves on the fruit instead. So we take those off as well. And that's got a side shoot in it as well. This one as well, look. We want fruit, not leaves on those, so just take them off. They'll be fine. And now, if I take that one off, if I can get me out, there it is. That will get on with producing tomatoes, not leaves. Most tomatoes, it doesn't affect. That one's actually Gardener's Delight, so probably they're more prone to that growing on than others. But the rest are fine. Now, I've got one more little job to do, so we'll nip out and do it, and then we'll come back in here, I think, because it's lovely and warm. Now, the other little job, it's lovely and warm in this zone, it's unbelievable. The other little job was to take the tops out of the broad beans to stop the black, black fly because we're coming up to black fly season now and the tops will be absolutely full of black fly if you leave them on so the idea is if you take away the food you won't get the black fly it's just a case you can pinch them off or you can cut them with secateurs i would say try and cut them with scissors or secateurs because if you pinch them you could tear them so it's just that, that top bit, just snip it out all the way. All the way along. I'm looking to see if there's any black fly in them yet. There's not, but there won't be long. But if the ones, the ones that you miss are the ones that will have the black fly in them, so try and get them all. There is some, I think, coming, yes, there's some just beginning to get on them. So I'll finish doing this and then come back to you. I'll just show you this. This is from the far end. There they are, look. Black fly is absolutely covered. So we really need to get rid of them. The broad beans are standing well and they're cropping well. About another week or so and we should start pulling a few off. Now we've got the tops off, there won't be a problem with the black fly. Let's just dip to the greenhouse because I think another storm's arriving. We've popped back in the greenhouse because it's a lot warmer and with the wind blowing I don't think you could hear me so well out there. So that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Many, many thanks for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And hopefully, we'll see you next week. And I do believe we're going to start harvesting next week. So take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye now.